stand together, please, this evening. It's good to see you, Stephanie, if you would ask the Lord to bless. Amen. Praise God. Dear God, we praise and thank you for this opportunity that we have to come to your house. We pray that you will help us, Lord, to worship you now, Lord, and learn more about you, and to go out and worthy the sheep. In my name, amen. 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 Praise, praise God. God. And we'll start with the word together again, just praising the Lord. We're together again.
Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Let us pray for God's blessing, His anointing, His leading and guiding. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for bringing us together one more time and for giving us this opportunity to not only worship and to praise you, but also to hear from you through your word. And Lord God, I thank you that your word provides us with strength and so much that we need each and every day. And so, Lord, I ask, Lord, that you would anoint uh, the words, Lord, that you've laid upon my heart, that there would be a strength to my brother and sister that are here this evening, and that we, dear Lord, then in turn would be able to impart that same strength to others, to encourage them, to lift them up if they've fallen, and to help them, dear Lord Jesus, to get back on their feet, and so that they can continue to march on in Jesus' name. And so we thank you, Lord, for victory. We thank you, dear Lord Jesus, that even though perhaps sometimes we don't see the victory, but we know, Lord God, that it is there, and that you are providing. And so, God, increase our faith and our courage to stand upon the rock and to not be moved, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Praise the Lord. So we live in uh, a world uh, that is, uh, if I use one word, a mess. Um, and when we look at the challenges that we have before us, one of the things that is really important is that we understand the situation, uh, not to give glory at all to the enemy, but so that we can call upon the Lord who is always there to give us and provide for us exactly what we need. So in that sense, we're very fortunate because we have one source, and only one, one place that we can come to, one that we can call unto, and the Lord will always provide our need. I found it uh, interesting, and, and the, this message came to me actually this morning. Um, as uh, Last night I went to sleep praying about what the Lord would lay upon my heart. This morning he gave me a verse we're going to take a look at in a moment. But it has to do, in a sense, uh, with overcoming. But provided, it also provides us with the equipment by which we are going to overcome. And so in recognizing the situation, we can make sure we have the proper equipment. Um, and uh, when I'm not watching the news or watching some sports, uh, I, Steph and I will sometimes watch home building shows. Um, just, uh, you know, sort of interesting to see, I suppose. We find it interesting. Um, and lately we're watching something where they are building homes in Florida. And I find it really kind of funny in a sense because none of the homes have um, basements and when they come to start the construction, they basically just scrape the ground, uh, which is no problem. There's no big heavy equipment. They don't have to dig down. They put footings in, but that's about it. But one thing they do do, because they recognize the environment that they're in, and I'm going to link this back to the spiritual in a second, they recognize that they're in tornado country, and they're in hurricane country, and that there are certain environmental conditions that they have to be aware of. And so they build all of their homes out of block, cinder block. And uh, so the walls, they're not wood construction, uh, they are all block, and then they fill the block with concrete. Now they don't do any other insulation per se either. So the block does the job, but because of the place where they're building, they adjust how they build so that what they have built will withstand the storms that are going to come. And you and I, when we uh, think about the world that we're living in today, we have to recognize that the enemy is out there and he wants to destroy so therefore, we can be thankful that we can come to the Lord and God is going to equip us with what we need to withstand the enemy. And that we can look at that in a general sense, but you can also claim that as an individual, because individually into each and every one of our lives come different trials and different tests, 
whether they be emotional or physical or financial, we don't all struggle with the same challenge on the same day or in the same portion of our lives. But God always has the equipment. God always has the weapons that we will need for the specific challenges that we are facing. So, our world today, as I said, is a mess. And on top of that, it is full of bad news, sad news. And so you see uh, faults and failures, and you see uh, hardships and trials and tests, and the challenge that I think we have as God's people is to not be overcome or overwhelmed by all of those negatives that are out there, but that we thank the Lord and come to Him recognizing that there are more positives than there are negatives. Now sometimes the positives are harder for us to spot. And, uh, you know, I remember certainly as a principal, uh, I would spend 99% of my day, or maybe not quite that much, but a large proportion of my day, I dealt with the negative kids, by and large. But they were a very small portion of the many children that uh, were in the school at the time, or during my years as a teacher and then as an administrator, the good far outnumber the negative, yet the negative seemed to be the ones that I remember. They seemed to be the ones that I could tell you the stories about, because I spent a lot of time with them. But when we think about this spiritually, we have to be careful that we don't only think about the negative. You know, I think in the world today, negative sells newspapers, negative sells the news. And so the more they can uh, run somebody down, or the more terrible the event is, the more likely people are to want to tune in and to see it. It's the old thing, you know, if you see a fire truck going down the road, there are all kinds of people that want to follow the fire truck. Because they want to see what's at the end, you know, and if the building is burning down, you'll get this massive crowd of people all that want to see. Or <coughs> occasionally, if I watch um, automotive racing, what gets the people most excited isn't the fact that the cars go around the track, around and around and around and around and around, but it's when there's this big accident that's when everybody gets excited. That's when the people rush forward because they want to see what's going on. So we seem to be attracted to the negative. But as God's people, the scripture tells us something completely different. So we have to recognize what Satan is trying to do by filling our heart, our mind with worry and fear and this trial and this test and this terrible thing that's happening in the world and this other terrible thing that's happening in the world and we have to remember that God gives us the victory and that God is victorious over all of these things because even, even Christians will spend an awful lot of time talking about all of the bad things, rather than being the light that I think the Lord wants us to be that shines the good things. And so we have to come to the Lord and ask Him to equip us so that we can overcome. And so the first verse that I want to go to is in Psalm chapter 1. It actually is also found, later on, a reference to this is also found in Jeremiah, but we're studying Jeremiah right now in Sunday school, so I sort of wanted to stay away from Jeremiah. But in Psalm 1, a psalm that we uh, know and have looked at a number of times, but this image, this picture in verse 3 of, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit 
in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. So, once again, we see a difference, okay? And we have this picture of a comparison, an image of God's people, those that follow the Lord, or as it says in verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree, but not any tree. This is a special tree. Because this is a tree, the scripture tells me, that is planted by the rivers of water. In other words, is planted by life, is planted by the good things. Like a river of water is healthy. A river of water is life-giving. It's a good thing. It's not a dried up sort of place, but it's something that gives life. And of course, here, the reference is to being planted near the Lord, or in the Lord. And in the Lord, we then get the strength that we need to overcome what is all around us. The verse that I, um, I believe, received from the Lord this morning, before I woke up, and I woke up with this on my mind, um, and was uh, reciting it, is in Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter, oh sorry, not Romans, Romans chapter 12, my apologies. <coughs> Romans 12, and the last verse, verse 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil, and it doesn't stop there. And this is the point that I want to just point out to you, right? It says, but overcome evil with good. Right. So, to me, this is really important because God doesn't just tell us what to do. He tells us how to do it. And in my life, and in perhaps in yours, that how is really, really helpful. And especially in the world that we have today, where we could be overwhelmed by all of these negative things, and some people are. You may know some people that do nothing but worry, who have conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory, and this is bad, and this is wrong, and this is going to happen, and this is going to happen. Well, you know what? God's got it under control. And so as far as I'm concerned, there's no point in worrying about what the Lord is already taking care of. Now that doesn't mean that we don't do things that are wise, but we do them under God's direction. It's God who provides us and tells us how to move forward. And so again, I don't need to worry as long as I am listening to the Lord and doing what he tells me to do. So in this particular verse, he first of all instructs us, every one of us, he says, be not overcome of evil. Well, if this was a book or a word coming from some natural scholar or a worldly person, that might be just where it stops. <coughs> But God doesn't leave us hanging. He doesn't say, now you figure out how you're going to do that. All right? He says to us, but overcome evil with good. So we know that there's a way to overcome. We know that there's a way not to be overcome. And again, there are two pieces there. All right? It's one thing not to be overcome. It's another thing to overcome. Are you following? Okay. So, uh, when I thought about this, uh, I thought of it about like a flood. Okay. And so, um, if you're going to be overcome by water, it means the water is going to flow over top of you. Right? And that's why I was thinking about being overwhelmed. 
When I'm overwhelmed, it means like it, I can't rise up above it. It's all around me. It's all encompassing. And it's, it's flooding over top of me. <coughs> well, it's one thing to build a dam to hold the water back. Okay? But it's a whole other thing to get above the water. So again, I'm going to repeat that, right? So it's, the water could flow over us, so we can build a wall, and that can stop the water, okay? But what Scripture is really telling us we can do is get above the water, all right? Not just have a dam, like, you know, if I'm here and there's a wall and the water on the other side, I'm still at the same level as the water. You know, and I guess that's safe for a while. But what we really want to do, we want to become the overcomers, right? So we want to rise up in Jesus' name with the power of Jesus. We want to get above that water. Not just have a barrier, but actually rise above it. You see, because when we are above the trial, above the test, the worries, the cares, are the things of this world, then I believe that's when we're doing what Scripture tells us to do. That's when we are overcoming, right, as it says here, but <coughs> overcome evil with good. So I don't want to just be equal to evil. And I don't just want to have a wall between evil on one side that's at six foot two, and me on the other side that's at six foot two. No. I want to overcome that evil. And so that means rising above it. Okay? So that it no longer is a threat. It is no longer a danger to me. Because if I just have a wall in between, then that can leak. And it's maybe going to hold for a while. But if I can rise above it, with the power of the Lord, then that's when we get the real victory. And so God tells us here in this little short verse, not to be overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So what do we have to do? We have to figure out what the good is. Because in this particular case, good is the weapon. Good is the uh, equipment okay, that is going to allow us to overcome evil or defeat evil. So the Bible tells us exactly what we need. Now we have to search the scripture. We're just going to do that very quickly um, because we want to be like this tree that is planted by the water. Okay, So that we have the right equipment and we are in the right place where we can overcome this evil with good. Not in our own strength. Not in our own good, is what we're going to see in the scripture, but with the power of God. So turn to 1 John, just very quickly. Let's, let's look at a few verses here. 1 John, chapter 5. Because overcoming evil with good is not something just anybody can do. It's only for a special group that this is possible. Okay? And it tells us that here in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Okay? So the world in the scripture, and when we look at it today, that's the evil. It's representative of evil, what we see in the world. And so this particular verse tells us, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. In other words, you need to be born again. We need to be saved. We need to give our hearts and lives to the Lord 
so that we are then born of God, and once we are born of God, then we can claim the rest of that particular verse, which is a verse of, I say, it's a verse of fact, okay? It doesn't say if, maybe, or anything like that. It says very clearly, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And then it gives us a more detail with regard to faith. But I want to just focus on the fact that we need to be born again, and then we can overcome the world. Okay? So being born again allows us then access to the weapons. And we know, there, you know the verses that we have uh, read a number of times. So if I go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4, I'll read it for you. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So reinforcing here, we're getting closer to uh, an understanding of what the good is. Because here it tells us that these weapons that we have are not carnal or natural in nature, but they're mighty through God. Okay, so attaching, connecting here the weapon to God and us being born again, part of God's family, then able to acquire these weapons. And one of the weapons that God gives us is goodness. Now, it's still kind of a general sort of a thing, but what we have to recognize is God is good. And there are scriptures that tell us that. So, in Matthew, chapter 19, Matthew 19, Jesus is responding here, and he says in verse 17, Matthew 19 and verse 17, he says, And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. But see, Jesus himself, and, you know, for the purposes of his conversation with this individual, he's, he's putting focus on God the Father. We know that God the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are three yet one, okay? So, Jesus is good, God is good, God the Father is good, and the Holy Spirit is good. And as Jesus put it, there is none good but one that is God. So if we take that verse, we recognize what it says that when we are born of God, we overcome the world. We recognize what it says about the weapons of our warfare through God, through His strength. And then we go back to the verse that tells us we will overcome evil with good. Well, what is good? According to the Bible, good is God. God is good. They are one in the same. And so, if we look at the verse then, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good, it's really telling us that we can overcome <coughs> evil with God. Because God is good. And God is the one who provides us with the weapons and the strength. And in Him, we have salvation. And through Him and being part of Him, we are able to overcome the world. So, as a child of God, it means that I need not be overwhelmed by what's going on in the world around me. Because Satan, really, would like nothing better than to fill your mind and my mind and every person's mind with nothing but negatives. To the point where you even have people 
saying things like, well, why would God allow this to happen, and why would God do that, and why would God do this other thing, which in effect, Satan has convinced these people to blame God. Well, wait a minute. Scripture says God is good. And he's the one that through him we're going to overcome all of these evils. We can have our heart and our mind cleansed of all of these worries and fears and concerns so that we don't have to be, you know, frozen statues or be immobile and not able to do the work that God wants us to do. If you're worried about all those things, if Christians are worried about all those things, then one has to start asking, where is our faith? What, where, what are we trusting in? How can we be worried if we believe that God will take care of us. If we believe that God has control over all those things, it doesn't make sense for us then to be worried in the same sense that the world worries. Now, you've probably gathered by now, I enjoy the news. And I spend a fair bit of time reading <coughs> or listening or watching different sources and and trying to stay on top of what's going on around me. And so, I, I, I tend to think that I'm fairly knowledgeable about what's happening out there. But that doesn't mean that I'm quaking in fear, or that I'm paralyzed in worry. What it means is that I understand that I need to get closer to the Lord each and every day because it is through Him that the Lord is going to help me to overcome or rise above all of these worries. Does that mean sometimes Satan doesn't get, grab a hold of my ankle and try and pull me under? No, he tries to do that on a pretty regular basis. But what it does mean is that I have to remember then to call upon the Lord and I have to go into the scripture and then I find a verse like this or the Lord lays a verse like this on my heart, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil of good. What a great model. <coughs> what a great thing to remember each and every day. And see, and then the Lord reinforces that and the last verse I want to give you is, again, one that we've looked at actually rather carefully at one time. It's in Philippians chapter 4. And the fact that we see all of this fit together in so many different places in the scripture, once again reinforces that God is the author of his word. And so here in Philippians 4, and when it talks about the peace, right, in verse 7, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds. Notice again it says, through Christ Jesus, right, because He is good. He's the one that's going to be the one that helps us to overcome. And then that list that we see there in verse 8, right, that we're all familiar with. Yet we have to be reminded See, everything in this list is good. There is nothing in this list that is negative. And that should be a really big clue for us, right? God is saying here, by providing these examples, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if and if the uh, and if there be any praise, think on these things. In other words, think on the goodness of Jesus. Think on the goodness of the Lord. Right? 
And that's why we have that chorus. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. That's a really important thing for us as God's people. You know, and I can say in this time that we live in, but to be honest with you, every person in history gone by probably could say the same thing. Because evil has always had its ugly head rearing. Always. And we might think it's bad right now, but the people that <coughs> lived through World War I or World War II or the plagues and, and things early in the, in the 1900s or the things that came before that, and if you study history, human beings have done terrible things to each other almost right from the very, very beginning. Cain and Abel doing terrible things to each other just about right from the very, very beginning. And through it all, the Lord has said, I will make a way for you. But you need to be born again you need to be part of my family, and then you have access to all of these tools. You know, I don't use a hammer for everything that I'm doing. I don't use a screwdriver for everything that I'm doing. I don't need uh, a crowbar for everything that I'm doing, etc., etc., etc. They all have specific purposes. And the Lord looks at us, and we can come to Him with our daily needs. Right? This is why Jesus said, Lord, we're praying, give us this day our daily bread. He wasn't just talking about a loaf of bread. And he wasn't just talking about natural food. He's talking about all of the different things that we would need to deal with the things that we're going through today. Whatever that trial or whatever that test might be. But the secret, it seems to me, or one of the keys that the Lord reveals is that we need to think on the good things. Keep ourselves focused on God because God is good. If we keep our eyes upon Him, then yes, we can be in the midst of the storm as Jesus was with the disciples in the vessel. And yet, Jesus was there, even in the storm. The disciples were worried, right? You know, they're gonna, they figured they're going to drown. Jesus, wake up. Some, you know, you're not doing what you need to do. You know, just because Jesus was sleeping didn't mean that he didn't have complete control of the situation that was going on. The people in the boat, they were panicking. And that's what you see people do today. Okay? And I'm not blaming them because there are times when I'm tempted to do the same. But like I said, that's no excuse for us. And we can do more by overcoming and fighting against and rising above all of these cares and all of these trials. My last thought, as I was meditating on this, was the scripture, I'm not going to turn to it, but the scripture how it talks about us being the light, the candle, right? Shining. And I thought, you know, we need to rise up. And that's that overcoming piece again. Because to be a candle on the ground, so to speak, surrounded by the bushes and everything else, is going to be hard to see. But the candle needs to be lifted up. Right? And so the light on the hill, right, high and lifted up, that's what we need to be today. Because the darker the world gets, the more they need the candle, the more they need the light, the more they need the Savior. And Jesus in his wisdom, and God in his wisdom, the Holy Spirit in his wisdom, decided that he would minister through people like you and like me. Very unworthy we are, and so far from perfect, 
And yet God is calling on us to be his witnesses. And his instruction there, you see, to overcome evil with good. That wasn't an instruction to God to himself. That wasn't instruction to Jesus to the Holy Spirit. That wasn't instruction for God to Jesus. That was instruction from God to us. And he gives us the strength through him to be able to do that. See, God's people are not helpless. We're far from it. And if we claim what is in the scripture, we are better equipped for whatever the world may bring our way than anybody else can be. Because we have the Lord. And as we sung this evening, we have victory because of the Lord. So stand with me this evening. And as we call on the Lord, perhaps for our own need, um, but let's also remember others. And it's a healthy thing for God's people to get their eyes off of self and to always consider others. And so we know there are people in the congregation that are struggling, um, that are going through a hard time, Pastor John has mentioned, uh, you know, praying not only for Sister Schwartz, but also for our brother Harris, um, who, you know, has gone through a couple weeks of, of real trial and uh, physical challenges, um, is apparently doing better. I've tried to call, but he's sleeping when I call, but I've spoken to Johnny, uh, and uh, he says his dad's getting stronger every day, and so we're thanking the Lord for that. And looking forward to seeing him out to church again. But there are needs everywhere, right? But remember, God is greater than the needs. And he's greater than the evil. And even though we might be able to go, oh, so-and-so needs prayer, and so-and-so needs prayer, and so-and-so needs prayer, and you could have a massive list, remember, God can meet all of those needs. And more. Okay? So don't just focus on how big the list is. Remember that God is greater than the list. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you, dear Lord God, that you are instructing us each and every day. And I'm thankful, Lord, that I have opportunity to sit at your feet, to hear your word, to search the scripture, to meditate on one verse or on a part of a verse, and I'm thankful, Lord, that you've given us the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the power to help us to understand. I'm thankful, Lord, that you illuminate your word, you shine a light on it, and make things clear. And you can connect the different verses together. And how, Lord, in that connection, we start to see and we see the, the victory, we see the equipment we see, dear Lord God, that we need not tremble in fear as long as we are standing with you, on you, you are in us, surrounded by you, sheltered in your arms. Lord God, as long as we are born again and we are part of the family of God, Lord Jesus, help us, Lord, not to quake and fear the enemy. But Lord Jesus, help us to recognize the victory that we already have. And that though the enemy might slay us, this natural body is only, is only something that's going to last for a short, short time in comparison to the eternity in victory that we have promised to all of us, your children. Lord God, give us spiritual boldness and help us to always give thanks to you who is the source of our strength, the source of our courage, the source of our faith, the source of, Lord Jesus, this overcoming power because you are good. You are goodness and there is none, none other that is good but you. So we are blessed. We are so blessed 
to be able to come before you this evening, to bring before you our personal needs, to bring before you the needs in the congregation, to bring before you the needs on the mission field, in our own country, in our own community, perhaps in our neighbor's home. There are no end of needs. But praise the Lord, and keep me, dear Lord, reminding me that no matter how big the need, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. God is always victorious. He's always overcoming. So thank you, Lord, for encouraging us this evening, for giving us eyes to see that promise. May we claim it and march forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.